very much wanted to be part of the opening night again, and specifically with the artist having happened. To be able to come up with a film that said to people, if you've seen the artist and you haven't seen Silent Film, then come and see this, because if you loved the artist, you will love this. Um, and I was very keen we should do show people. It felt like a movie from the same stable as the artist, albeit 80 years earlier. I don't know, I must admit, what the genesis of it was. All I know is that King Vidor, taking on a subject like show people, would do it well. He would do it with affection for the industry of which he's a part. He would do it as a sales piece for MGM, which it undoubtedly is. And he would do it to feature an extremely good comedian in Marion Davis. Um, what I still think is amazing, and playing it again tonight brought it home, was how much genuine emotion can be wrung from characters who are comic. Um, I think because we all assume that silent comedy is going to have an element of caricature to it. But King Vidor hated caricature. I can remember an interview that he gave to Kevin Brownlee where he uses the word pantomime. He said, you know, in silent cinema we had to use pantomime. And then there's a pause and then he says, hopefully fairly realistic pantomime. This afternoon, seeing the Lost Art of the Film Explainer put musicians and a voice speaking at the same time as you're watching a film made it more real. Even though you could see the guy speaking on stage, you could hear the musicians, you could see the musicians playing, you could see the film. But I was drawn into the film far more than if I hadn't been able to visualise the guy doing the speaking and the musicians doing the playing. It's the key to the live experience of silent film and it's still an odd one it's I, I don't entirely understand it but its potency is in those multiple awarenesses for an audience it's taken a long time for me to process this but great silent film live silent film is about theatrical experiences and you need a theatrical space you need the theatricality of the way the films are acted and put across you need the liveness of the music once you've got those things, it is one stage on from cinema. And almost entirely unrepeatable on DVD sitting at home in front of the TV. It was absolutely a no-brainer coming back to Bonex because no matter how often you play or where you play, you become aware after a while that the films that work, the nights that work, are actually not about a particular movie or about the size of venue or about having travelled for thousands of miles to get there. They're about a space which has a real potency to it. Um, I think this space does. I think it's so theatrical as a hippodrome cinema. It's round. It concentrates the audience down onto quite a narrow space there, but the sound bounces off the walls. And you have a very, very high ceiling. You're looking up to a starry sky. This is one of the most theatrical cinemas I know. And when you add to that the idea of a gala, where everybody's got dressed up, full house, champagne beforehand, a film you know is going to work, and an audience so up for it, uh, it's, it is an absolutely lovely experience. And that counts for far more than, you know, if I ever got invited to go and play Los Angeles or whatever, I wouldn't be able to walk out on stage with the same confidence that we're all going to have a tremendous time as I can here.